Welcome to Medikawa and a massive, massive Assalamu Alaikum. Today, we will be discussing the current crisis we find ourselves drowned in. Whom with our resident GP, Dr. Asim Farooq, who is an NHS and private GP based in Croydon and Chelsea. He specializes in diabetes. His NHS work is at his Croydon Medical Center. He's the lead GP at the West Valley Hospital in West Croydon, where he sees private patients. He's a clinical governance lead for Chelsea Pharmacy Medical Clinic, a private clinic in London. He is also the clinical he, um, governance lead for Chelsea Pharmacy Medical Clinic, a, a private clinic in London, as I already um, mentioned. He posts regular health advice videos on his YouTube channel called Doctor's Order, so definitely go on to that. He is a well-known member of the community in Croydon, giving regular health talks in mosques and community centres and has made a variety of media appearances on television and radio before. In his words, they all know me in Croydon. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, doing very well. I have to say a massive thank you to you for taking out time uh, from your busy uh, uh, diary and to be here and to give us time. So thank you once again. No problem. Viewers, today the topic we are discussing started off as an epidemic converted into a pandemic known as coronavirus. We want to discuss the myths and the false ideas circulating in the internet and on social media. So I think the first question I have for you, doctor, is what is virus? What is coronavirus? What is epidemic? What is pandemic? Yes, thank you very much uh, for introducing me. And let's start off with a virus. You would think a lot of people understand the difference between a virus and a bacteria, but very often they don't always. For instance, we know a bacteria is killed by antibiotics, mm -hmm. whereas a virus is not. So where does the name virus come from? Well, the Latin virus actually means poison. Right. So they did recognize bacteria eventually, but then they didn't really recognize viruses until much later because they're much tinier things. Now, a lot of people also have a bit of a misunderstanding because they've learned a little bit about a virus and they've learned that it's not actually technically a living thing. Mm -hmm. And also they then will utilize that to say, well, because of that, you can't actually physically catch a virus or kill a virus. Mm. And again, I'll explain that in a, in a little while. But ultimately, if you understand what a virus is, the technical makeup, and we've all now become familiar with the picture of coronavirus. Yes. Hopefully we'll see it on the back of our screen soon as well. Yes. But ultimately, it is a, you know, we see a round shape and it's basically like a, a round, like almost like a seed isn't it? But also sticking out from all that is all these spikes. Yes. Okay. And those spikes actually are what gave its name. The, the Latin corona is like a halo type of thing. Now, ultimately, um, you know, the corona type of viruses are specifically a type of virus that has originated from animals mm -hmm. and has moved to humans. Okay. So that's also very important, the corona type of viruses. We know about other respiratory viruses, we know about influenza, you know, um, so there are a few other viruses out there we have heard about, but corona specifically have come from animals. Now, they do that because they mutate, they change, okay? Now, ultimately, inside the, the virus, we have some material, some genetic material, either DNA or RNA, and that's like the code, like almost like the computer code, sure. telling, telling it what to do. And on the outside is the protein we mentioned. Now, technically, it's not living because technically, and I think we have these pictures now, technically, it's actually n it doesn't have its own energy source or can't reproduce. So it needs to go into a host, which is us, yeah. in order to do all those things. Okay? 
Now, you asked me about an epidemic and a pandemic. So an epidemic is where there is a lot of cases locally, okay? A pandemic is where it becomes global, okay? And now we all know what a pandemic is because this thing truly is a global phenomenon that we are now facing. So hopefully that explains what is a virus and a coronavirus. Yes, thank you so much, Doctor. I think the next uh, question I wish to address is that um, a coronavirus, is it more deadly than a flu? Um, in the past, we've had uh, a SARS, swine flu, Ebola. If it is, then how do we um, behave? And if it is not, then why the panic and the reaction? Yeah. So currently, we're seeing the global figures for the mortality around about 4.5%. Now, again, we can go into a little bit more detail behind the mortality. Is it really as high as that? But it's still fairly high mm -hmm. because the flu has a mortality or the number of people it kills, 0.1%. Right. Percent. Okay. Now, even if it's truly 45 times more, or even if it's 10 times more, or 20 times more, it's still a lot more deadly than normal flu. The other thing that's important is how many people can this virus infect and move on to other people? And that's the other thing. It trumps the normal flu, whereas it can spread to two and a half more people every time it infects somebody. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine. You know, if I pass it to you, you spread it to another two and a half people, they will spread it to another two and a half people. Within 30 days, you've spread it to about 500 people already, just one person. Yes. And it could be even more, you know. So potentially, that's the other difference between the other thing between flu and this. Now, ultimately, the reason why hopefully our mortality may not be as big as this is we had to do this severe lockdown. Otherwise, we would have had absolutely much higher numbers. We're still seeing fairly high numbers. Don't forget that flu, we know, kills people every year, mm -hmm. approximately 17,000 every year. And then we have to see, well, how many is this killing so far? It's currently, I think, close to 6,000 deaths. So, you know, it's not as high yet as flu. But of course, the other thing is, flu may kill people, that's in a year. Obviously, it's more in the winter, but that's still gonna be over a few months. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is killing people suddenly and quickly. So that's the other thing. Now, the other thing I want you to remember is doubling time. We've seen those graphs where the numbers go up and up and up. So, you know, the number of people doubles every three or four days. So that's also very important. And finally, incubation time. Mm. So it's inside us, but it's not showing any symptoms. Again, this is longer compared to other viruses. It can be in your body up to two weeks without you even necessarily knowing about it. Mm -hmm. The average is five or six days. Again, normal flu, a few days. So that's really the important difference between this and flu, which is what we all can relate to. Sure. But one thing I think is important to really relate it to is things like SARS and MERS. Some of us may have heard of this. SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome, where it attacks your lungs, okay? That kills 10% of people, very severe. And also MERS, which again, some of us may relate to because it's the Middle Eastern respiratory syndrome, which did affect Saudi Arabia a few years ago and that actually killed even, even more people. So ultimately, we could probably say this is behaving more like SARS, mm. and therefore we should really call this SARS-CoV-2 rather than COVID necessarily. COVID, all it just means is coronavirus disease. That's all it really means. Right. 19 actually means 2019, the year yes. it was discovered. So that's why the name has come about. Hopefully everyone realizes that this is something that is really serious because if it affects your lungs, you know, that's what we need to breathe. And that's where everyone gets into trouble. So, so it's, um, it's, it's really um, different from Ebola and um, SARS then? Yes, exactly. Slightly different Slightly from different. it. Because the other main difference between those two as well uh -huh. was that Ebola, as an example, well, it killed 50% of people infected, uh. so it killed about 13,000. It was still in a specific area in the Democratic Republic of Congo, but also you could only get it if you touched a body directly or necessarily a dead body. So that's why it was still a bit limited. Yes. 
And also SARS was also limited, because that also came about in China. Uh, we'll talk more about the theories about China later. Yes. But that was also limited because that only uh, spread to other people once people had sim obvious symptoms. Mm -hmm. Whereas this can spread, as I mentioned, before you even have any symptoms. And that's why you know, I've been telling people the importance of the government measures about lockdown and social distancing. Um, you know, I've mentioned that social distancing is not one of my Indian relatives called Sushal distancing. Uh. It is, in fact, <laughs> something very important that we yeah. need to take seriously. Yes because ultimately we have to maintain that distance so it doesn't spread to people. Yes. And we have to abide by the lockdown laws, which people are flouting. We saw people, when it's ever it gets hot, they want to go and sunbathe. Yeah. We don't need to sunbathe, most of us, I'm no. sure we agree. Yes. But ultimately, well, we might do because vitamin D is actually useful. We can talk about that later. But yes. ultimately, it's important that we listen to this advice the government is giving us and not get too much into conspiracies, which I'm sure we'll discuss a bit later. Yeah, we will do. And also, doctor, I want to ask, um, because is it because of not listening to the government advice um, we see um, a lot of death rates in different different countries like Italy like Spain like Germany um, yeah. now in England and also in the United States absolutely absolutely so Italy hopefully everyone's familiar uh, you know that was we were hearing about that in the news in Europe how high the death rate was there which is approximately 11% and you compare that to Germany, only 1%. Yes. And then, of course, China, 4%, the average. And Israel, 0.35%. Again, conspiracy theories start happening. Why has Israel got so low? Again, we can discuss that a bit later. But there are differences, reasonable differences, why this is happening. Number one, it could be, and of course, uh, the mortality rate at the moment is in Britain about 10% at the moment. That. But that, first of all, I have to tell people, is the case fatality rate. In other words, the number of people who are tested positive versus the number of people who die. Mm -hmm. Now, we already know that to get tested in Britain is a bit more difficult. Yes. So at the moment, if you're ill enough to need testing, then, you know, obviously you'll get the test and then 10% of those people are dying. Does not mean that 10% of all people will die who get it. Okay, we know that. But that's our case fatality rate. Now, ultimately, the differences could be in how much we are testing. Mm -hmm. Germany was well known in the fact that it tested lots and lots of people. Okay? The other thing with Germany, they have much more critical care beds than us. Yes. Again, very, very important things. All right? So these are some important things. Now, we know that Israel went into a very severe lockdown very quickly as well. Again, that could be the reason why they were so low. So we know that. We also know that China has finally managed to get out on the other side. And the reason for that, again, the severe lockdown measures. If I can explain to you guys yep. what China did in their lockdown, they basically said that anybody who has any symptoms at all, they will be taken straight to hospital and they have to stay in hospital regardless. And then they would be tested. If they were negative, they'd test them again, test them a third time to be 100% sure they do not have it before they let them out. Right. On top of that, that gave them the chance to really test a lot of people and see what is the true rates of the mortality. And maybe the 4% they have may be the true figure because they found approximately 80% of people who tested positive did absolutely fine. Okay. And everyone needs to be reassured, you know, just because you've got it does not mean we're all gonna die, so let's not panic, mm -hmm. all right? 80% absolutely fine they found that 15% were quite unwell, quite severely unwell, okay? And they found 5% were very critical and potentially needed ITU, and that's where the mortality comes in. So I think this is all important, why the differences are there, and I think I would urge the government to follow the, the, the example where testing is important. You know, at the beginning, they didn't really listen that testing was important. They finally understood that. Yes. Um, but maybe a bit late, because now there is not enough testing equipment out there. Right. So again, very important. So please, please listen to the advice and do what you're please told. Okay, so you know, doctor, a lot of people, maybe within our Asians, I could be wrong, that uh, if they are falling ill, they are reluctant to go and pay a visit to the hospitals uh, because they say, look, if I go, they will convert my illness into coronavirus. What do you say to that? You know what, that, that is actually a very valid point. Right. Do not go to hospital, do not visit your GP, do not even visit your pharmacist if you have symptoms. Hopefully we're gonna do another, another show 
where we're going to go in more detail about the exact symptoms and treatments. Right. But I really wanted to address some of the important myths and things that people are not necessarily doing correctly. So please don't go out. Follow the isolation rules. Again, we can explain that. And you can go on the government COVID website to explain what is isolation. Yes. Okay, very important. Now, ultimately, you know, you should contact your GP. And what we're learning now as GPs is we can assess people over the phone and we have now got access to videos. You know, I don't propose I, uh, you know, uh, test people over the TV cameras, guys, so please don't ring in and ask yeah, about your symptoms course. here. Thank you very much. But ultimately, we have ways now that we can diagnose people accurately using technology, give them advice, help them. And again, we can do further shows on how you can do this in the right way. But please don't go rushing straight to hospital. You know, you need to ring in advance your doctors or 111, tell them your symptoms, get the advice first. Very, very important. Okay, lovely. Thank you so much for that. And also, um, I know we will be talking, hopefully, in the second segment, more about uh, the, um, the conspiracy theories out there. Uh, I want to touch that specifically in the second segment. So what about, you mentioned uh, lockdowns. Yep. Now, here in this country, our lockdowns happened quite late if you would agree with that. Yeah. Other countries, they went into lockdown quite early. Uh, like Italy and Spain, they went into lockdown quite early. But the, again, the death rates in those specific countries were so higher, so much higher than ours. Yeah. What, okay. what, why was that? So, what about Italy? So we mentioned something about the uh, testing, but there's another important thing. There are differences with racial differences mm. that we are seeing now. Now, Italy and also population differences, mm. because in Italy we know it's a more elderly population. What else? Italy has populations where multiple generations live together. Now, I'm sure many of us Asians are thinking, hang on, I live with multiple generations. Yes. And actually, am I also in a racial group that puts me at more risk? Unfortunately, yes, you are. Being Asian has been identified as a potential higher risk, okay? Now, added to that, there may be other reasons that we found people with high blood pressure, people who are overweight, people who've got borderline or even diabetes mm -hmm. have got much higher risk. And that, again, most Asians will fall into that category, okay? You know, we all love our curries, we all love our ambalas, you yes. know, yeah? So ultimately, we need to realize that this causes problems. Now, if we can really work hard on controlling some of these risks, the blood pressure as well, you know, pre-diabetes, bring down the sugars, it's gonna be important as well for us. And I think while we're in lockdown, please, please take the advice about exercise. You know, I'm speaking to so many people mm. who say, Doc, I'm in lockdown. I'm in my bedroom all day watching TV. You know, and by all means, you can watch us on TV, but, yes. you know, exercise is important. You can go outside, you know? So this thing is only spread by specific droplets. Mm -hmm. It's not all through the air. Yes. So it's droplets. When you cough or sneeze, that's how it's gonna pass on to you. So you can get some fresh air, it's fine. You need to get the exercise because only also going out and getting vitamin D, the sunshine. There's been some studies that if you get more vitamin D, it can be useful for you. Some people have said maybe the vitamin D level in Italy is low. Maybe that's another reason why they're getting it. So I think, again, important. So, you know, I've advised my parents, look, you know, just stay at home. That's important. You know, um, you know, get your shopping delivered. You know, don't mix with anybody. It's important to do that because obviously when the parents are older, you know, and Asian, you know, they're going to be more at risk. So it's very important that we realize there are differences. Has everyone seen the death rates for us doctors? Has everyone seen their names and their pictures? They're all Asian doctors, wow. you know? Could that be because we're, we're all surrounded by Asian doctors? I'd like to think so, but actually only 10% yes. of doctors are Asian or Muslim. Yes. And actually we've seen the vast majority are Asian, Indian or Muslim. So this is, there's, a, there's obviously a link there as well, isn't there? Yes. You know, there's a link now we're seeing bus drivers also all going down. Because again, could it be the exposure? Now this is very important. How much exposure do you have to the virus? Uber drivers. Yes, Uber drivers as well, yes. How much exposure do you have will determine how bad you will respond to this thing. 
And because you can't see it, you don't know how much risk, how much exposure you're getting. Yes. So you've got to minimize that exposure. So really important because, you know, whenever the weather gets hot straight away, you know, we have to reiterate the story. You know, even Matt Hancock had to reiterate, don't go out there and lie in there and sunbathing. You know, please listen to advice. You go out there for a walk or some exercise, but that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, in the garden, a bit of exercise, that's what you do. Yes. The rest of the time, you are in lockdown. Yes. You know, otherwise, we'll have to make the lockdown even more harsh. You know, so that's the important thing. But don't you think um, making, I personally believe, now th this is a personal thing, because I come to the, when I come to work, I use public transport. And now I've stopped using public transport and I use my own personal car to uh, get here in the studio. Now, public transport is also extremely bad to use. Am I right? Correct, correct. Because yes. of the exposure. Because of the exposure, yes. Because of what you said earlier on. Yes. And so, so hence, um, if, if people, um, key workers, or people related to media or charity or aid workers, the best way for them to travel is their own vehicles, their own cars. Yeah. So potentially, there are certain risks with public transport. And that is ultimately, we talked about incubation time. Yeah. The virus is living in your system. You mm. don't know about it. And that's where also, you might be well also. Yes. But then you could be spreading it. Okay. Also, you know, it's important to talk about the spread. Yeah. And what we're finally realizing a few things, something called formite spread. Right. So if I get my hand, put it on the table, you know, formite spread is where some of these bugs go onto the surface. And actually, if you analyze you know, the, the surfaces, if you actually analyze even your mobile phone, mm. you know, the, the amount of bugs on there, it's, it's quite amazing. Right. So formites, very important. That's where gloves potentially could be useful. Again, we'll talk about the pros and cons of gloves in a yes. minute. But masks, again, we can talk about pros and cons of that. But remember that they're not necessarily protective of you getting it, but more protective if you have it and haven't got any symptoms, you spreading it to other people. Okay, so if you were to wear masks and gloves, everybody, and to follow social distancing, because mm. this is important, because if you, you know, and that's the hard bit, isn't it? When you get on and off the tube, when you sit down, you aren't two meters apart. Mm -hmm. If you could find a way of doing that, it would be safer. Yes. All right. If you were to, let's say, wear masks and gloves, mainly to stop you spreading to other people, that could be useful. All right. So these are the things to consider. So no one's saying absolutely no public transport. Now, obviously, the, the bus drivers have said they need support as well and they need protection. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to provide that because 10, I believe 10 bus drivers have passed away yes. very recently. Again, we need to watch out for that because many of them can be Asian, maybe overweight. And being male also is one of the high-risk categories. Wow. Which, unfortunately, you know, uh, Boris, as we all know, he's in ITU. Yes. You know, uh, he is 55, he is overweight, he's male. It puts you at higher risk. So we've got to all watch out. Absolutely. Does that Jazakallah for that and um, very uh, well educated um, first segment by Dr. Asim Farooq, uh, mashallah. So we spoke about the definition of virus and we spoke about the definition of coronavirus. We spoke about what epidemic and pandemic means and we also spoke about the differences between coronavirus and flu and the past uh, SARS and uh, the swine flu and the Ebola that we had. The most important thing uh, in this segment for me that I understood, and I'm sure you understood as well, is to stay in lockdown. Make sure uh, you stay away from other people. Social distancing is one word and one term we heard quite a lot in uh, the media and on social media and whenever we watch the news. So make sure that uh, uh, you, yourselves, your families in isolation, in lockdown. If you do go out, uh, make sure you are going out in an area where there are not too many people. And if there are, then stay away. Do your exercise and come back in home. Listen to the government advice, most importantly. In the next segment, we will be discussing more uh, um, topics um, under this coronavirus. Inshallah, so do not go anywhere. Stay put. Assalamu alaikum.